What's up, my sister in Christ? So, I was just um, looking at your thing, and God, when we give you these words of encouragement, I pray that they go past your mind and into your soul. Because God is doing surgery today. That's why you cried. Because the only time something can get out um, is through that emotion when we hold things in. So, crying, you know, the emotion we have, that's when that stuff can get out and we feel refreshed. And that's why everybody posted on your post because you had to be poured back into the love of God so depression can't be there no more. But it was good that you did this because um, you listened to the Holy Spirit. He told you to do this because people are going to pull from this. A lot of people do walk around with depression and other things, and they just never get rid of it. It just kind of gets numb sometimes. You know, we go to church. Okay, you know, I feel good. But it's like, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, when you cut it, and then it grows back. But we got to get rid of the root. <clears throat> Psalms 147 and 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, healing their pain and comforting their sorrow. Psalms 34 and 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those who are whose spirits are crushed. So this is why that came out, because now God is going to fill you back up. And, you know, a lot of times when we are, you know, when we are broken, um, that's when God can get in, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, no longer can depression hide, you know what I'm saying? And it also shows you that if you do come out like this and you tell people and people are, are negative, then they're probably not somebody you should have in your corner, you know what I'm saying? Only those in which are going to encourage you. Um, Romans 12 and 2, do not copy the behavior or customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know what God's will is for you which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Colossians 3 and 10, And having put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him who created him. So what God is trying to teach you is that God is teaching you how to lean more on his strength and less on your own strength. Um, this is a season of new beginnings. So he wants to give you a new mindset daily, you know what I'm saying, how you look at it. You know, the situation didn't change, but God can change your perspective. A lot of times our perspective allows us to be, <clears throat> excuse me, allows us to have, um, you know, encouragement or it allows us to be depressed. So if you look at when they sold Joseph into slavery, you know, they they uh, took his uh, clothes and they cut him up and they put, um, you know, blood on it and they gave it to the father. They didn't say anything. They allowed the father to elaborate what they did. You know, they allowed the father to kind of think whatever he wanted to. So he formed in his own mind. You know, he got depressed. If you read the scripture, it says, you know, he was he, he, he was, um, you know, saying greatly depressed. And so but had he known that you know what, my son is still alive, he's just in slavery, you know, maybe I can sell some stuff and get him back, or maybe I can, you know, uh, trade or whatever like that, but he, you know, it was his own perspective, you know, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your understanding, Romans 8, 28, it says, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose for those that love him, so that means that if you love God, God is giving you a promise, that no matter what, this is all going to work out to your good. And this is why, you know, this is happening so that, you know, you can help others because you do inspire a lot of people. You know, people do look up to you and, you know, um, it's easier to feel close or connected with somebody when you're like, you know what, I was going with that too because not everybody can just say, hey, you know, this is how I'm feeling because we know how sometimes people judge us, you know what I'm saying, and even people in the church, you know what I'm saying, you know, they just be like, oh, well, what, you supposed to have it all together and what people think and just like, but that's what Paul said. He said, not that I have everything together, not that I have arrived or achieved, you know, but, you know, I press toward the mark, Matthew 21 and 9. And so good. when Jesus was talking to the fig tree, he came to and he said, let no fruit grow on you ever again. So the type of fruit that's growing, um, we curse you at the root in the mighty name of Jesus. Just like he said um, that you're not bearing no fruit. So depression, you are uprooted. You are cut from this. And also anybody else that's watching, you know, saying we cut that root as well, too, whether it's depression, suicidal thoughts, um, whatever it is, low self-esteem. So we bind that in the mighty name of Jesus. Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, is anything excellent or praiseworthy, think on these such things. So you got to put on the full armor of God. You know, just like, you know, when you get up, you know, saying you get dressed and everything like that, you know, you put your clothes on and you got to put on the full armor of God. You got to take a couple minutes and, and put on your full armor of God because, you know, saying so you can withstand, you know, the devil's, um, 
plans, but thinking about strange and the fiery trials that come to try you as though some strange thing were there, you know what I'm saying? Anything that happens to us that doesn't feel so good is designed to bring us closer to God. Romans 8, 37, it says, now in all these things you are more than a conqueror. So if we look up conquer in a dictionary, it says to gain or acquire by force of arms, to overcome by force of arms, to gain mastery over or win by overcoming obstacles and op or opposition, to overcome by mental or moral power. So therefore, you are more than that. Second Corinthians 12 and 9, it says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient. That means it's enough for you. My loving kindness and my mercy are more than enough always available regardless of the situation i for my power is being perfected and it's completed and shows us up more effectively in your weakness so god's power is perfect in our weakness therefore i will more gladly boast in all my weaknesses so that the power of christ may completely enfold me and may dwell in me psalms 55 and 22 it says cast your burden on the lord and he will sustain you he will never permit the righteous to be moved you know <clears throat> life never excuse me you know, life never caught God by surprise. It catches us by surprise, but we always got to have our armor. We always got to be ready, you know what I'm saying, to fight. And even though the scripture says that the battle is not ours, it's the Lord's, we still got to show it to the fight. You know, some people going to talk about us. Some people at work going to act funny or whatever the case may be, or family members or some people in the church or Facebook or whatever the case may be and whatever like that. You know what I'm saying? We still got to show up to the fight, you know. <clears throat> John 16 and 13. But when light catches us by surprise, you know, we got to put these scriptures and we got to read them. I have told you the I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. John 14 and 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So I just wanted to say, you know, so I hope these words are encouragement. You know, scripture, Hebrews 4 and 12, you know, it talks about that the word of God is alive, it's active, and it's like sharper than the two-edged sword. And so that's why these words are coming so we can destroy uh, depression so that now you can be filled back up with the word of God and you continue to do what God has called you to do. Because, you know what I'm saying, no more of numbing of the pain. And it's like you said, you know what I'm saying, it's just something that the church needs to address because a lot of people are dealing with things. You know, they, you know, they go to church and the sermon is great and everything like that. And then all of a sudden it's like they go home and they're, you know, back in the same situation, you know, saying they're back feeling with that because the root wasn't dealt with. And all of a sudden they just they just got um, some some numbing pain. You know, they got some feel good and they wasn't thinking about it. And, you know, a lot of people go to coping mechanisms like, you know, drugs, alcohol, you know, sex whatever the case may be, or other forms of coping mechanisms that don't work. They just kind of numb the pain because they like, oh, well, I just want to deal with this. But this is why we have the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit tells us, <clears throat> excuse me, it's just something that we need to deal with. So that's what God wanted to deal with, because that's why you cry for a half hour, because you had to get all that stuff off your chest. All that stuff had to come out. You know what I'm saying? That's why you need rest now. You know, Matthew 11, 28, 30, you know, talks about God's talking about taking my yoke, and I will show you how to carry it. You know what I'm saying? It's still the same amount of weight, but it's how you carry it. And what happens is in life, you know what I'm saying? Like if I told you, I said, you know what? So we got to say, get all your stuff that you need. In a, you know, we in a grocery store. Get all, get all the stuff you need, and you know, and, and, and then I'll pay for it. And you go to the grocery store, and you put everything in the cart that you need, everything. And then all of a sudden, you know, we in the back, and all of a sudden, I'm like, all right, just take it up to the register. And so what happens is in life, when life hits us, it's like a wheel falls off, and another wheel falls off. And then another wheel falls off. And then all of a sudden, there's no wheels on it because anxiety, then crept in, depression, whatever. Somebody dealing with loneliness, you know what I'm saying? Suicidal thoughts, whatever it is. And all of a sudden, we need those things, but we try to push it up to the to the um, front register. And even if you get help, you know what I'm saying, 15, 20 people to help you push it, it's still going to be hard. But just like when we, you know, just like in a vehicle, you know what I'm saying, when something is wrong, we go get it fixed. You know what I'm saying? So that's why God is coming to the root now because all you gotta do is put the wheels back on. And that it's the same amount of weight, it's just how you carry it. You know what I'm saying? When those wheels fall off, you know what I'm saying, we carry weight unhealthy. That's why we gotta be careful. You know what I'm saying? But now, you know, we're dealing with the root now, so that you know what I'm saying, also with this you can help others. You know what I'm saying? Proverbs three, five, and six, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That's why he directed you to say this because everybody else is going to feed from this and pull from this and say, you know what? It's time for this to be cut today. It's time for this root to be gone. You know what I'm saying? 
So that's what has to happen. And then for those that say, you know what? Well, it's the devil. You know, the devil's busy today. I don't like to give him credit anyway. You know, I try to give him less credit anyway. I mean, look at the story of Job. You know what I'm saying? Job never gave him credit. All through that, he said, yet though he slay me, yet will I trust thee. But even if it is the enemy, Genesis 15 and 20, what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn for good. So it don't matter. And so, again, if you if you love God, God will give you a promise. Romans 8, 28, that no matter what it is, and don't say some things. It says all things will work together for good for those who call it according to his purpose for those that love him. So if you love God, he loves you. And the Bible says draw closer to him and he will draw closer to you. So I'll leave you with this. The more you require from God, the more he requires from you. God bless.